<laughs> Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Today we have with us a special guest. We have Adam Bushkov of Polish metal band Hate. Welcome to the show, Adam. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Adam, reading through your bio a little bit, I saw that you graduated in psychology at the University of Warsaw. So did you ever pursue anything in that field? Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> I, I have this, this education here, but uh, no, never worked as a psychologist or, um, or a therapist, you know, or something like that. It's, uh, it would be probably something, um, you know, it's, it's simply, it's, it isn't in my character somehow. I mean, I, I, I'm not a good therapist. I cannot <laughs> see myself as one. And, um, and besides, I, um, right after my studies, I, I started... Uh, uh, you know, the but my band hate. We mm-hmm. started playing more shows, and that it, uh, it simply was too absorbing to to do anything uh, besides that um, for for a few years at that time. So, so no, I <laughs> I am not, and I haven't been a psychologist <laughs> just, working one at least. Just <laughs> just checking because I have interviewed a band from Sweden. Same thing. He had a psychology degree, and he was a psychologist in the Swedish prison system. <laughs> And okay. in a bit, so, hey, I thought maybe you're a psychologist in the Polish prison system. I guess I was wrong, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fortunately, we're wrong. Mm-hmm. So, Adam, give us a little history on hate when the when the band first formed and why you started and all that kind of stuff. Um, the beginnings. You're mm-hmm. you're asking me about the prehistoric. That's time, right. But I when I started the band in 1990. I was a um, teenager, 17 year old actually, huh. and um, and um, very at, the, at my beginnings of being a metalhead, you know, I, I still I remember I was um, attracted to most uh, to to more extreme forms of it. You know, I was I was at that time I was listening to bands like like Venom and uh, Slayer and destruction, Sodom, stuff like that. So I really wanted to to have my own band. And um, and I did actually, you know, complete this dream. I, I started uh, my own band in 1990 and uh, I remember it was spring of 1990, we named it Hate and, and it all started from there. And what was like the Polish you know, underground scene like back when you started that? Mm, actually, we were one of the first bands that uh, mm, that actually created this extreme metal scene. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, there were Vader. They are even older than us, <laughs> so <laughs> they, they, they were there already. But, um, but not many bands, actually. Uh, there were bands like um, Pandemonium and Imperator, the ba- bands that haven't survived. Mm-hmm. As, uh, and uh, Behemoth came later, like two years after us, and then decapitated like six or seven years uh, after us. So um, I think that we have contributed quite much in uh, to to the forming of this of the scene, and it's. Uh, Mm, and I'm pretty proud of it, actually, to be to be a part of it. Of it, and uh, it's something truly important to me. But you guys have been around for like 27 years, and that's really close to like 30 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's very true. <clears throat> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you already said. You guys pretty much started forming that whole underground scene over there in Polish Poland, and then all these other bands that people think of were like the pioneers of everything kind of came after you so so i think that's that's kind of important information for people t- to learn about uh, you know with you guys in the you know the underground back then now they're like almost is no underground anymore with social media and the way things have progressed and everything like it's a whole different time yeah sure absolutely and and, and speaking of that Adam, you know, like we said, now you guys been around for some 27 years. You're going to be coming out with your 10th full-length album in about a week or so. Um, 
how do you think that the band has progressed over the years from album to album as far as trying different things along the way and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that we have we've made a big progress since <laughs> since the beginnings. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, the the main thing is that we we never record the same album. We always try to refine the formula over time to look for a new sound, new ways of expression and it was it wasn't different in this case because um, we decided to change the studio and the producer and this time it was uh, Arek Malta Malczewski, uh, the guy who works very closely with uh, Behemoth mm -hmm. and he was responsible for, for the whole production and we mm, also chose some some other studios this time it was uh, custom 34 for for the drums and uh, sound division studio in warsaw for for the rest of of the production and um, it was quite comfortable actually because we we were not in a hurry we mm, the whole process lasted for like five months with some breaks and uh so we had a lot of time this time, and um, we could really uh, find uh, the proper sound, the proper um, um, character of the production, of the overall production, you know. And um, it was very important for us to grasp this energy of the band playing that plays live, like in a rehearsal room on the st or on the stage. And I think we we managed to to do so. It's it, the, the album is much more raw, organic, and yet very powerful. I think when it comes to sound, and I'm and I'm pretty happy and and proud of it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about about the album now. The name of the album, Tremendum. And it's out on Napalm Records, or it will be in about a week or so. So tell us a little bit about, you know, the titles, meaning, and how it pertains to the rest of the album. Well, Tremendum means, means exactly shivering, evil side of holiness. Mm -hmm. Because it, um, it relates to the archaic notion of holiness, which, is, which combines the two elements, good and evil. So one cannot exist without the other. And this is this is something that uh, comes from the pre-Christian times, and um, and most of the songs on the album they they relate to paganism, to pre-Christian Slavic um, uh, philosophy, uh, and um, it's like I mean, get, getting back to the Slavic roots in a way, you know, and um, mm, well. It's, it, I felt it was important because this domain is like a lost world. I mean, almost completely unknown to the, to the people today. It's uh, values, philosophies, mm, and everything that was connected to, with that has been destroyed by, by Christian civilization that came along. So uh, I kind of discovered it. Uh, I'm pretty really much interested in it right now it's a great source of inspiration and uh, and over the last two decades a lot has been discovered mm, and then uh, I think it's it's a great legacy and it's it's definitely something worth referring to so quite a lot of themes and uh, on this album and 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 the whole songs are connected to that you know and I was going to say, too, with the title name and some of the tracks names, just reading it, I mean, were you inspired, uh, you know, by books like, you know, like, like Rudolf Otto's The Idea of the Holy or anything like that? Um, not really. I mean, You should uh, check it out because it almost goes hand in hand with what you just wrote on this album. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so, okay, so, you know, how did you approach this one? Now, you said you approached it organically this time around. Did you guys try anything different as far as instrumentation or anything like that? Mm, well, we, <clears throat> instrumentation was, it was, was pretty much the same, mm -hmm. but uh, we used some, um, say, some samples mm -hmm. and also some ethnic sounds here and there 
um, just to you know build up the proper atmosphere to to make some parts of the of the songs some more um, elaborate so to speak so um, um, well it was it, it was pretty it was pretty simple in this in this respect because we we did this on other albums too so it's it's not very different mm-hmm. from other albums mm-hmm. that's what I mean but um, um, but when it comes to, to production it's 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 a completely different story. I mean, it's it's really like um, I can feel that the sound is is refreshed, you know, and it's it's very dynamic, and this is the the thing that I like the most about this album. And when you guys did this album, did you guys bring in any guests or anything? Oh yes, there is one, and it's uh, it's uh, his name is uh, Dean Paul Arnold. Is a guitarist with uh, Vital Remains now, mm-hmm. and we met uh, we met up um, during some tour in in Europe with uh, with them and Belfagor like a year ago or something, and um, mm, he's a good friend of ours now, and um, he's also a big hate fan. So uh, we actually didn't plan working together, mm-hmm. but it, it it comes like this naturally. It, you know, it came up like that in a natural way. Somehow, I I thought that he would add something from him to one or two songs, and and um, and it worked very good. And uh, um, it was it was very very easy to collaborate with him actually, because when it comes to music, we we can communicate almost without words. You know, mm-hmm. so. Um, so I think that he left some very good trace in the songs because he played uh, four solo parts on the album out of 12, I think. <laughs> so quite quite a lot of it. And, um, and I'm really happy about that because it's, uh, it's, uh, he has really left a very good input in it, I mean, uh, I think. And so tell us now a little bit about the cover, the artist, uh, the cover artist, and what the album art depicts, Adam. It is um, the um, the cover is made by Daniel Rushiwovich, is uh, is uh, our longtime collaborator because he has made uh, four uh, artworks for for our albums up to now, and um, what you can see on the on this cover is a uh, is a bird. Which is uh, called Lelek in Polish, and in English it's Nighthawk. Mm-hmm. It's a small bird of prey, nocturnal bird, and um, it lives in Poland, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and it was kind of worshipped by uh, by the Slavic tribes, um, and um, and this this particular bird is is connected with. Uh, bringing souls to this world and taking them away from this world so it it, it, it was often named um, messenger of death and as this album has so many um, different connections with the Slavic uh, beliefs and philosophies it uh, we, we thought that it would be a, a very good emblem a very good um, a sign that would be that would represent the album as a whole, you know. Um, yeah. And so, and what format is this going to be released on? I mean, are you guys are going to have vinyl and CD and the whole nine yards? Yes, everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, are you guys going to do some uh, touring to um, follow up the release? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We we're going on tour in May with. Um, uh, American band Apsu mm. and uh, and one German band Nargorov and it's gonna be um, not a very long one but like three weeks tour around Europe mm-hmm. especially Central Europe and the UK and um, then we do some festivals in Europe some summer festivals also a short tour in Greece uh, so that's this is confirmed, but um, we're getting uh, quite a lot of offers now, 
and uh, there will be many more, I think. And uh, when it comes to shows, I mean, we'll be much, much more active after releasing this album. And um, and also we were working on our return to America, uh, we're working with some new agency now. So I really do hope that we will be able to come back to America this year only. And um, I must say I, I really count on it because we haven't been in America for uh, four years mm-hmm. or five now. So it's been uh, quite a long time. But uh, but back in the days we did uh, quite a quite a long, good, successful tours supporting bands like Mayhem and uh, Sepultura and Rotting Christ. So I have very good memories connected to, to America and how we were recep- how what receptions we, we, we got there and uh, uh, you know it's, it was really really cool I must say and we still have some some good fans in America so definitely be trying to, to come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we would love to have you back here because I've never seen you over here. And, and Adam, what are some of the best sites to find out more about the band? What tours you have coming up once you can announce them and that kind of thing? Well, it's um, you need to observe our Facebook profile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and there there's everything. I mean, the tour in the section tour dates, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, but if there be a, a tour announced, you will know that I'm pretty sure. I mean, we won't keep it secret. <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook page is probably the best bet for people then to to go find everything out about you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, awesome. So there you guys go. The new album, Tremendum, out the first week of May on Napalm Records. And Adam, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us today. And all the best to you and touring and with the new album. Thanks very much. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you.